checklists are for when it really matters and you can't fuck up because you fuck up a building's going to collapse people in your airplane are going to die open heart surgery is just going to go wildly wrong welcome to the smart nonsense podcast where we talk about entrepreneurship self-development and challenging norms today we have this red rocket <laughs> red hot off the red rocket press <laughs> You got, you got to grow up. <laughs> Have you seen the South Park? We're like, Red no. Rocket, Red Rocket, Red Rocket, Red Rocket. Red Rocket, Red Rocket, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, I hate that show. I, we're going to put me up this. the B-roll me this. on YouTube. We are talking today about the Checklist Manifesto. It's a book by Atul Gawande. Um, <laughs> I just read his book, Being Mortal, as well this week. So it's been a good week for me. Um, Pop, who is Gawande? What should we know about him? I know you crammed this book. You're here. You've been studying like this was a test. Yes. Yes. I'm stressed. I like the shirt. I'm Be, so whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> Subscribe. Get on YouTube. Watch YouTube, this thing. There's going to be a lot. We're adding B-roll left and right here. We already got the Red Rocket of South Park coming up. We're going to have a lot more today. Okay. I have to start in the normal intro. All right. Atul Gawande. Who is him? Who is <laughs> <Who's> him? <laughs> Woo. Oh, I just peaked. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. Okay, All right. Atul Gawande. Who is he? Not him. He's, I don't know, just he's basically a Harvard surgeon. He even talks about, he's like, oh, you just want to be a general surgeon. But then they're like, no, you got to specialize. And he's like, all right, I'll be a cancer surgeon. They're like, no, 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 no. Like hyper specialized, the super specialist. So now he's just a little endocrine gland surgeon. But he also works with World Health Organization. Oh, what? He was doing general surgery in this book. I mean, you got to know general surgery, but like his specialty mm. is the endocrine system okay. cancer. And he's written a bunch of books. He's got a lot of things. books, doing a lot of things. He's, All medicine related. He's just a genius. But who is this for? It's for a lot of people. Yes. This, you this, know the format. The, I like this about The, the you. checklist manifesto and, and checklist in general go Ooh. so far beyond medicine. Right? I, what? I want to make a checklist just for our like... Intro. Did we tell them to watch on YouTube? Exactly. Did we tell them to subscribe? Exactly. Did do we it. say the book shit? Do it. Make a checklist Why right don't now. I have that? And I'll I keep could. talking. We could do a live. You can one. make checklists of checklists. That's what Adam Savage does. Um, but we're talking about pilots that use checklists like badasses. We've got Hurricane Katrina efforts using checklists, checklists like Walmart check doctors. Lie. Check lie. Check lie. <laughs> Jacqueline Hyde, baby. That's who it's for. Everyone. Well, it's, it's, it's just one. Here's for the everyone. thing, right? Some people. You don't need checklists as much, right? If you're just, <clears throat> you know, you got unimportant shit that you do, which I hope most people don't, but like checklists are for when it really matters and you can't fuck up because you fuck up, a building's going to collapse, people in your airplane are going to die, your, your open heart surgery is just going to go wildly wrong. It extends every. I mean, even we talk about people that use it and I'm reading, uh, well, I'm always reading, but poor Charlie's Almanac. Mm-hmm. You're always reading. I'm always. Book. It's well. It's an almanac. Like you come back to it right, when you right, need it. Right. But Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's business partner, can't speak. They use checklists to make sure that when they make an investment decision, it's always the right one, or almost always. Because what, what Gawande says is, humans weren't built for for discipline. Like it's just not what humans do. But checklists. Our discipline and they're your discipline checks you got to get people to buy into it that's why we'll talk about maybe how we're using it later on yeah. but it's like the, the checklist you're not just doing checklists because of the checklist you're doing it because it it brings people yeah. together because you're yeah. you're working like you know henry clap for the checklist hit record like all this stuff you just want people on the same page it's I so like, critical i like when he talks about like you say building into checklists like um time for executives to speak with one another mm. like things get held for review and then on the checklist i think it was mostly in construction they all have to come together and they have to sign off on things so because nothing's going right here's what's so this whole book it comes down to a simple concept it's just like do fucking checklists they're awesome they're dope and everything's just confirming like this this works in every industry and so, all right, I want to start with like a story. The punchline's already kind of ruined, but what happens? Why Why does Atul Gawande get into this whole mess of checklists? Like, where does this first come starts from? Starts in the hospital, right? Well, it starts in the hospital, but that, who approaches him? Who approaches him? 
<laughs> who who approaches him? Ooh. World Health Organization. Okay, there you go. They approach him in something like 2006. So 2006, they come to him and they're like, hey, we heard you're an amazing doctor, a surgeon. And there's a skyrocketing amount of surgeries as the world becomes more and more developed. We have a quarter of a billion surgeries every year. One in 25 people are having a surgery. You did study. I always <laughs> study. So, all right, how can we solve this problem? And a tool's first question Wait, is Wait, what like, was the problem? The problem, oh, sorry. The problem, the problem is, is like, there are a lot of issues that mistakes. come up. Mistakes. Mistakes that ton happen. A ton of mistakes. The, the, the opening of or the- Or not even. It's like, how do we make it safer in general? Safer, right. And the opening of the book was they mixed up two people in surgery on the operating table, right? They're like doing an appendectomy on someone with a hemorrhaging like brain. So so they come they to him died. and they're like, all right, that's kind of the newsworthy version. But there are so many cases of like they just didn't tap the line correctly or however a lot of this medical stuff works. But it leads to an infection. And then that's why you have really easy things too, like administering antibiotics at the exact right time. Mm. Right. Like it's the same. You have to have 60 minutes of uh, or maybe it's three minutes, I don't, whatever. But it's the same for like every procedure. Didn't cram. <laughs> Did not cram. But you got to get those antibiotics in. But they were forgetting to do them. That's and why, like even with my grandmother when she was still alive, like going in the hospital is a risk because there's just so much you're susceptible to. If people are making mistakes like the ICU, basically everyone's going to end up in the ICU. And 50 percent. What, what kind of fact is that? Is that? That's basically everyone's going to end up in the ICU at, at, at some, some point in their life. Fuck. Right. You should read Being Mortal. Huh. I, I listen really to the sad, podcast. Really sad stuff. Um, so the idea is like you're going to be there at some point in your life. You want to make sure they're doing it right. And if you're there, you have so much going on because it's intensive care. 187 or so little operate little actions that they have to take that can potentially cause complications that kill you. And that's why 50% of people, so one in two people that go into the ICU, they have these developments that could have been prevented. Uh, like negative developments, I should say. And we've talked about this too. Complications. Complications. Remember, like willpower. Are you close it. enough to this? Thing? It's really loud. I'm, I'm coming in hot. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, okay. I'm trying to give it some space. Yeah. Um, you're, no, you're good. But um, willpower is finite, right? And so you've got a nurse who's doing a 14-hour shift. 13 and a half hours in, like... There's no way they're as sharp as they were at, at seven in the morning. There's just no way. Right. So let's let's circle back to the World Health Organization. They have all these issues like, you know, the nurses. Uh, we're talking about it in developed countries. Think of it in less developed countries where they barely have money for any medical supplies. But they're like, all right, all these surgeries, a tool. What do we do? And his first question is like, well, you know, what what's our budget here? Like, how much can we spend to improve all these? Because you're thinking like, oh, maybe we train doctors or surgeons, nurses, whatever. Give them better tools, give them better right. medicine, technology. Maybe it's like an incentive program where like the more people you save or prevent from dying, you get money. They come back and like, you know, um, nothing. We have no money. So get to work. It's And this is what's amazing to me is like when you apply constraints, it's, it's fascinating. I was actually reading a book about... Um, Poor Charlie's Almanac. Yeah, poor Charlie's. No. Lessons lessons for like every 20-year-old or something. The Stanford Design Program or something. They have like a uh, advanced degree or something. Whatever. You it's didn't the, study. It's the woman that runs the design program there. And she's like, she'll ask people to... Here's, here's the little uh, thought experiment. Okay. I'll give you $5. What's the most amount of money that you can make in the next 24 hours. With those $5? Yeah, I'm giving you $5. What can you make in the next 24 hours? And what she found is, well, maybe this might be counter to my point, but basically the people that ignored the $5 altogether, because $5 isn't gonna buy you much. Like $5 of ads can't get you anything. Like what, you're gonna buy like a stapler? So people that just ignored that, they, they, could, they could use I'm realizing this point doesn't make much sense, but basically like constraints applied to things are awesome because you think of creative solutions, basically like okay. the creative solution was ignore that pretty and much. take a hundred dollars out of your pocket or no, like just like some people don't use any money. There was one where it's like they had the presentation, so they were supposed to present their results the next day and what they ignore the $5 and they just 
sold ad spots on their presentation. Oh, okay. It was like really cool okay. shit. But okay. whatever. So they come and the tools realizes he has no money, so he can't do the training, can't do the incentives, can't do new medical equipment, can't do anything. I, yeah. What is he coming? Well, with? I have good news. I have really good news, Pop. <laughs> Checklists. Mm. Other than the pencil and the piece of paper, free. It's they're free. It's it's free and it's so intuitive that it's counterintuitive as in it's it's so simple that people are like there's no fucking way this works there's just no way but then he builds the case throughout the whole book and there are so many good little stories yeah. like like um uh, do we just get well it, it solved a lot of problems too like okay yes they're administering drugs at the right time they're taking they would even like put something over the scalpel so you could that was like the last thing you could check off but it was also solving like power dynamic issues mm. between senior doctors and low-level nurses where like now the nurses were in control you know uh, there's this book i forget the title but it's on victorian surgery and medicine and they used to have theaters <laughs> and it's like jack the butcher type dude comes up on stage and he's gonna try and perform the fastest surgery possible <laughs> in this person and there's just an audience of all these people it's like that's the shit and that's what kind of evolved into the current status world of surgery where it's like hey i'm the surgeon y'all are just here to like watch and help me yeah. if i ask for i'm it. qualified and i went to school for a long time so maybe that worked back in the day right shit wasn't that complicated but now world health organization well, it, it was like just as complicated they were just killing they had everyone. no idea they were doing like do. bleed outs right it was just a guess and check fucking system so basically there are two ways that you can fail right and i even wrote this down one you have ignorance and that was in the past. That was ignorance of like, oh, let's just throw leashes on this guy and bleed him out and see if the bad blood gets out. People didn't know what the hell was going on. Now, for the most part, with the exception of like COVID and certain stuff, we know mostly what's going on. There are like 13,000 possible oh, even complications. COVID. We, we've got a vaccine in like 11 months. Right. Less it's than a year. Unbelievable. So for the most part, all the information is out there. I'm too excited. This is jambalaya. Jambalaya Jumb mouth. <laughs> All the information is out there. But we're still fucking up. Like, so th there's just too much of it. So here's where you come to ineptitude. You know what I love about this podcast? Ineptitude. Was this, in, were, were ignorance and ineptitude in the book? Yeah. Totally missed it, you know? Or I didn't relate to it. I didn't write it down. And here we are talking about it. And, and you're informing me. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm just here to teach. And you're here to... <laughs> Move your body, <laughs> Yanni. So, <laughs> ignorance and aptitude. We are beyond the stage of ignorance. That is no longer an excuse for failing because all the information is there. The only reason we're failing, for the most part, is ineptitude. And that's where you have all these malpractice suits where it's like, oh, you know, they, they operated on the wrong limb or they just, whatever, didn't give the person the right amount of blood or whatever the, the case being. It's, it's all over the place because that's what makes the news. It's like, oh, we had the information, but you didn't do it. And it's super easy to file a lawsuit for that reason. And there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of ins insurance money there. Right. So now it's just how do we solve an aptitude? That's where the checklist comes in. Because you shouldn't be focused. Like there are so many complicated things going on, like thousands of medicines that you can give people. Just so much going on. 187 or whatever operations every single day in the ICU. So much that can go wrong. You don't want to fuck up. Like they said what is it, 1% of all the actions they take in a day would be a fuck up. And you're like, all right, well, that's that's a high number. But then you're like, well, if you have almost 200 a day, that means two things for every single person, every single day is getting screwed up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, that's going to be something that causes serious complications down the line. So checklist comes in. It's uh, It's one of those cases where a lot of people didn't buy it, like we said. And then he just started testing it, testing it, testing it all around the world. And I guess we can just go to the conclusion with the medical. No, field. we're not going to the conclusion. What do you mean the conclusion? You want another example? Let me, can we go Mythbusters? All can right, we yeah. talk about Van Halen? <laughs> that stud. So, or the, the band, I guess. This goes around so much. I don't know why. Like, it, it's just this like little party trick where you talk about Van Halen's rider where they had, they asked for m hey, backstage. I even looked this up beforehand. I, I read the whole rider or at least skimmed it. Yeah. We're going to put the B-roll there. Oh, it shows nice. exactly where it is. It's so, a so long the, ass. The thing. notion, everyone, they're like, oh, Van Halen's so cool. They always ask for Eminem. Or no, they're like, Van Halen's a diva. Eddie Van Halen, I think, um, is a diva. He always asks for Eminem's oh, backstage. 
but no brown M&Ms. You can't have brown M&Ms. If there are brown M&Ms, he's leaving. He's not playing the show. Do you know why? I do know why, but tell us. It has nothing to do with his M&M preference. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck about these brown M&Ms. What he cares about is people's attention to detail. So he's going to put a thousand things on this rider that you can mess up. And he wants to make sure that you go through and make sure every because, single checklist because is their, checked. Because their tours were so insane. You know, they were allowed to bring like two trailers into the park, into the arena. And Van Halen had like fucking 19 <laughs> semis, like for this whole thing. And so they have a whole list of what has to go right to get those trailers in and get the stage set up. And because of like weight limits and stuff, if that stuff isn't cleared by the arena, if it if it wouldn't work, then like the whole thing will fall apart. Mm. So he hides this clause deep in the rider that that basically allows him to figure out if somebody read all of right, the rules about his, his... He can figure out like, do I trust these people or not just by the color of the M&Ms right. when he comes in? Because if they didn't read that, Van Halen's going to fall through the floor because his gear is too heavy. It's funny too because... The condition is like, hey, if I find a single brown M M&M, and M, none of the promoters get money. It all comes to me. Yeah, like attention. To and detail. I don't know if it's necessarily that he's going to walk out, but if they didn't get that detail, then he needs to make sure everyone's on the same page about all of his trucks coming in. Right. They're they're going to go through the whole thing for the actual important stuff. Right. And that's what the checklist is. At the end of the day, it's like you don't want this super long uh, Van Halen style checklist. That is just overwhelming. Maybe we'll maybe we'll hold off. We'll hold off on exactly the the perfect checklist. That's the too perfect much. checklist. Well, like, oh yeah, what it should be. But I want to say first this little story, okay? Because I yeah, like this shit. Yeah, I like yeah, aviation. Yeah. I like war. Yes, yes. And I, the examples of 1935. We're coming in. Who's we? Just the Americans. Okay. So America is like all right. We had World War One a while back. Nothing since, but. I don't even know if there's they know about the shit going on in Germany and stuff. But basically, like, hey, we want a new a new fleet of long range bombers. Mm. And so who's the person to go to? Who's the company to go to? Boeing. Well, oh, that was nice. I like the way you yeah, that was nice. Boeing. Boeing with a B. Boeing's the the go-to juggernaut in this world. And so they think, all right, Boeing designs the craziest plane out there. Far exceeds the competition in terms of other people creating planes in terms of what it can do it can go twice as far as any previous bomber it can carry five times the payload of the other designs it's just this absolute beast they even call it what is it the the castle no not the castle the uh fortress fa- flying fortress the flying fortress because it's so massive going through Wasn't the sky it also just impossible to fly here's what happens Ever. yeah they're going and it's like here's the test flight right we got five people on the crew we'll see what they can do but the problem is there's so much shit going on that this plane takes off and within 300 feet, it stalls out and comes <laughs> flying back to the ground. It's like Boeing last year. Easy. Too, soon. too soon. Two people die. This isn't too soon. It was That's not too soon. Ago. Boeing last year, too soon. Too soon. It but comes they, back to the yeah. ground. Two people die. The, I think the rest are injured. But the problem is, it's just too much shit going on. They forgot to do one little control in like the rudder or something, and then it it comes back down. So they think, well, we can't go with this Boeing 299 at the time. And they go with like the the second far inferior plane. But then they're like, you know what? We we bought like 60 or whatever of the other plane. Let's just try, let's buy like two of these flying fortresses and see what happens. And so they put a couple guys in charge and they come up with this sexy little checklist it's not little it's like a a big ass book book yeah it starts out small but you kind of build on it for every single critical element of the flight you want a little checklist and that way same thing you look in a modern airliner you go through and you know oh this is the pre-flight checklist and we go yeah so if you're sitting on a plane about to take off and you see the little flaps on the wings doing this they're just going through checklists and i've watched a lot of pilots too they're like in flight. We're just doing checklists. The whole and that's time. the thing. Like the world is so complicated. Actually, we can get into this. Really? Well, well, I'll say it for now. The The world is so complicated. Like you can't have that master surgeon that knows everything. You can't have just the, the genius scientist that knows or, or engineer that knows how the plane works from the wheels up. 
Like there's just too much shit it's going on. Thing. No one can know. Are you going to memorize all the buttons? and The little Einstein yeah. thing. How long's a mile? I have no idea. So that's the thing. There's just too much shit out there. But with the checklist, you know, and it's got its little like labels and shit. You're like, all right, pre-flight. This is what we do. Uh, right before takeoff. This is what we do. And so you don't need to know everything. All you need to know is can you read these small bullets on the checklist that are critical to the success of our flight or prevention of failure? I can't speak today. And what's really cool is the two types of checklists, especially that pilots use. It's the do confirm and the read do. And I think before flight, they're doing a lot of do confirm, right? So they have a checklist of the 10 things they need to do. They confirm it with the first officer that it happens. But when trouble strikes and, you know, this is when like your heart rate goes up. People often forget how to dial 911 in an emergency because of this stuff. Mm. Then you get the read do checklist. And that's just like, oh, here's your issue. Read, do, read, do. And what I like the most is, at least in an airplane, it's the co-pilot that, that starts the checklist. Mm. That was in Sully's story, at least. It, yeah, it's the thing before where they're like, oh, let's give the checklist to the surgeon because he's the one doing it. But he's going to forget. You want to disperse the, the accountability, the responsibility within the team so that now you're empowering the nurse or the co-pilot or whomever it is to... You are empowering whomever. Yeah, whomever. I s- <laughs> You're empowering whoever it is. Whomever. Jesus Christ. <laughs> to to really just be a team and everyone's kind of on the same playing field because you can now have a nurse or a co-pilot that says, no, you can't go on in surgery until we do this checklist. And she's backed up or he is backed up by everyone believing in the checklist. Mm-hmm. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For other people reading this book and for myself. I read it fast. What did... Hurricane Katrina and Walmart have to do with checklists. I know it was about decentralizing power. So maybe it was about the power, power dynamic, like nurses and doctors, where basically like corporate Walmart said to the stores, just do whatever you have to do to get, lend people a hand. And like FEMA couldn't even. I think up. that was mostly the point uh, because it was the issue of Katrina happened. It was a surprise. The levees broke and the government was just failing to respond. There was too much bureaucracy, too many like checks and balances shit to go on going on so walmart's like you know what screw you guys uh we just give these couple mandates maybe like a couple checks of like uh, just make sure this i, this I don't know this. i think it was less connected to the it checklist. was just I cool forget. it was just cool how because i didn't know but how quickly walmart sprang into action and they were like they were like ransacking the pharmacy to get mm. people their meds like you know in, in a good way right you know it's it's full of all these examples and that's why you can go through it pretty fast but it, it's just and I it, can't like, I, I just hate people because people are like, all right, everyone gets excited about, say, the the Da Vinci surgery robot, you know, where I remember in the news, like when I was in middle school, whatever, it's like, oh, now uh, you can use robots to do the, the smallest surgery and you're never going to fail because of that. But what, it's a $2 million machine and you'll use it once a year, whereas every single operation, you have a checklist and it improves like it, it cuts the the death rate by fifty percent. Yeah, I think that stuff's really good for small things in the brain and like arteries and veins and stuff. But um, it's kind of like it's kind of like an Elon Musk. This has nothing to do with checklists, but humans versus robots. Where like humans are really good at figuring out three dimensional space, robots that are in X Y Z coordinates, like it's very hard. If the button on your shirt is just a millimeter down like i can very easily unbutton that and i will tonight but it went right over your head i wasn't even <laughs> listening <laughs> you look like me when i get on those giggles easy okay anyway um humans are are like can work better <laughs> this, you got any other points the tea only lasted 24 on, minutes if you're checking out the viewers no, are checking no out. no one's checking out because i gotta tell you how to make a dope checklist i make a lot of checklists do you make checklists yeah notion that's notion why i love notion because all yeah. the checklists when we're uploading Good when we're point. doing todd the other day he forgot to turn on one of the lights now it's in the checklist yep my and youtube I'm like, uploading is all checklists same deal um our dunbar stuff is all checklists my day-to-day is checklists it it, it doubles as giving you a, a little uh, endorphin boost too mm. you check something off what are you looking at <laughs> learn it <laughs> Dude, I literally just zoned out. <laughs> like looking at my arm. Um, 
<laughs> What's wrong with you? All right. So how do you make a dope checklist? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I had like a checklist amount of steps. Oh, did you write this down? No, this is my checklist. Oh. All right. Checklist. Here we go. How many checks do you want to do? If you have a checklist, you want to make it simple. Yeah. Simple, yeah, simple, yeah. simple. So that means yeah. five to nine little boxes that you go through checking. Yeah. No more. Uh, maybe fewer if you're crazy, but usually five to nine, that's the sweet spot. You want this to be something where you can do it in 60 seconds. Really? 60 seconds. Well, it depends on the checklist. What if I have a daily checklist that's four things? No, I'm saying like, oh, maybe you have, say, for example, like pilots taking off. There's a lot of shit going on. They break it into like sub checklists, you know, like this is the checklist for so, right before taking off. Well, OK, so I had to write a thank you note today. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you can do that in 60 seconds? Give me 20 minutes. No, no, I'm, I'm saying like you can go through the checklist and check everything. In oh, 60 OK, seconds. cool. So you should be it's able like to one word. Yeah, like our checklist right here that we did in the beginning, like yeah. clap, record audio, record video, review, whatever, backup. That like, we never do, but that took us maybe 15 seconds to do. What do you mean we never do it? That, I do it every time. That is a, yeah, I know, I'm kidding. That is a read, do, right? Well, we kind of mix and match. Do confirm. Uh, yeah, I, with Todd, for, uh, with the person, whatever. It's we, too late. It's too late. We do, uh, do confirm because, You'll come already with right. some stuff set up and you just want to make sure. So it, you yeah, can that, figure out. Yeah. Oh, that's what I remembered. The, the three Wake different up. types of uh, complication things. What is it? Problems. Types of problems. You have your simple problem, your complicated problem, and your complex problem. You remember hearing that? No. Oh, okay. Well, simple is just like simple. Uh, I don't know. It's fucking it's a simple problem. You just do it. Complicated. <laughs> I wish I wrote down the examples. But complicated is like something you look at a skyscraper and you're like, how the hell did they build that? Okay. It's There's so much going on, so many intricacies, logistically difficult problems. But it's really not that hard. You just have all these sub checklists for every single person, the electrician, the plumber, the uh, every little subcontractor. You can within have it. a checklist that reminds you to read all your different checklists. Right. Just it could go for checklist infinity. pyramid scheme. Don't do that. What? So that's the complicated one. And then you have complex and complex. The example they give is like raising a child where maybe you have the checklist, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get the best child because there are a lot of like different variables at play. I remember that. Right. So basically the checklist is perfect for complicated stuff and, and simple stuff, obviously. But like complicated We've done it before. It's proven with complex stuff. You usually want like a, a checklist for the basics. And then beyond that, like your, your creativity can just. You're saying go. like if it were a child, which is complex, you want a checklist that says like wake them up in the morning. Hopefully give them breakfast, get them to school, like simple stuff. Yeah, it's going to make simple out of the complex. You got to realize that it's harder. The checklist doesn't do as well with that. I mean, it does, but like you're still going to get varied results. Right. But complicated stuff, like stuff that we know how to do. It's just a matter of you don't want your brain doing the the robotic tasks that are just monotonous. Like just let that be a call response sort of system. And then you never have to worry about it because people love being directed. They just love having do this, do that. Okay. Well, I did it. And you're guaranteed success. Okay. I don't know. That was just something I want to mention. I like <laughs> it. For Sorry to detract. But okay. Dope checklist, right? So we have five to nine bullets or checks to be done. It's got to be a minute. It's got to be super simple. So like no complex language, just the, the very bare bones. And this stuff, and we talk about it in the checklist that the who made. Can we emphasize the, the that that goes for everything? Just be simple. No, yeah. No jargon. Simple Like, like all you the time. and I should be able to work through the pilot's checklist knowing. And we probably you know, could. Yeah. Knowing nothing about the plane. That's the idea. Again, I don't I don't know if they all go through the checklist for the entire book because it's a fat book, but you don't need to. You just flip to it and it's super simple. Yeah. Even one of the bullets in one of the checklists was like, fly the plane. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. Oh yeah, you heard that? Oh, they got pictures in that? Yeah, it literally says fly the airplane. So so this is oh, they were doing that test for the door cargo. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the cargo door being open mid flight which I guess led to some serious pressure explosions on a couple flights. Mm -hmm. It's like one pull. Oh yeah. Wow. I already don't know what this means. And I just said we could probably do it. 
LDG alt selector. Anyway, you're supposed to do something. Pull on and set to 8,000 and then choose one. You have two options. Airplane altitude is at or below 8,000 feet. Do this thing. Or it's above 8,000 feet. Do this other thing. Um, flip some switches. There we go. It's just break. At the end. <laughs> at the end. At the end, it actually says, do not accomplish the following checklists. Which is super interesting. The don't end, don't throw people for a loop right now. The end now. of this check... Yeah, right? The end of this checklist says, don't go do these other checklists. You didn't even read the checklist I wanted you to read. Which one do you want me to read? I don't know. There's one where it starts with... Fly, fly the, the airplane. airplane. Yeah. And, oh, so this go. is an engine failure. By the way, I don't think people realize... Um, engine hey. failure on an airplane? Not super dangerous. They hmm. simulate it. They simulate for it. Why do you keep looking at my knees? I, your book is literally right there. <laughs> That's planes that's, can uh, fly. Entrapment. They can also fly with um, no engines. That's what Sully did. He glided for a while. Helicopters, helicopters. This is for my parents. They, you know, um, after Kobe's death, they said I'm never getting in a helicopter. Actually, safer than airplanes. Mm -hmm. the, the helicopter engine goes out. They can uh, glide down. I forget what it's called. Anyway, <laughs> this is the engine failure during flight. Do you want to read it? You seem eager. Well, we'll we're gonna put up a graphic too for those Let of you watching it. on YouTube. So enjoy that. <laughs> Nobody's read it. on YouTube. Get out of here. 30 <laughs> people, at least an episode. Fly the airplane. This isn't a checklist. This podcast <laughs> is going to shit. All right, let's wrap this thing it's up. It's bullet then. points. I don't know how you're supposed to do this. Five to nine. I, you know I, the worst part? I think three minutes ago, I said the language should be simple and we should be able to do a pilot's checklist. I don't think we should be able to do a pilot's checklist because there are a lot of acronyms and stuff that they know that we should oh let's know. talk about acronyms baby <laughs> acronyms they're terrible they're no, terrible they're, they're good if you know no. what's going on the no. who the who now i don't have to say world health organization every single time but if you're in a meeting with 20 people and three people don't know what who is they're gone yeah well make sure everyone knows if it's important no. or don't use an acronym don't use acronyms no you they're important in no. certain cases certain cases i say stem you know what it means we both know what it means Only so we should I'm use in it stem yeah. If someone else doesn't know STEM, we'll say science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Oh, I'm surprised I got that. All right. <laughs> so checklist, just keep it simple. 60 seconds, five to nine bullets. Uh, only the critical stuff, like the World Health Organization, they only wanted 19 total checks in their whole like one pager. It's always going to be one pager. And so they had to cur cut certain stuff out. Like, for example, if a fire happens in surgery, which it does happen, it's a concern, but power outage. It doesn't happen enough where it's critical. And people are often like, you know, this, why do we have this check on here for like, well, say whatever, say fire. If it never happens, it's one of those like black swan events. But when it does happen, you want to know exactly what to do and make sure you prevent it every single time. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> this, you have got to get up. All right. Uh, God damn. I want. <laughs> I, I want to watch this podcast on three x speed because your morale just nose dies, nose I, dope. At twenty four minutes, we knew it was over. All right, we. Well, I'm having a ball. <laughs> I'm having a ball. Do you have any last thoughts? Can we talk about his his final story? No, you should just read it. You should read it. Oh, look he at that clip! Literally, in. literally. Um. Well, you're gonna ruin it now. I'm just gonna ruin okay. it a little bit. I'm going to give them enough that they're going to want to... Espoilear. Yeah. That's, a, that's a spoil, spoil in Spanish. So basically, he's doing like a pretty routine surgery. However, it's a surgery that's really close to some uh, major artery on your heart. And if you cut it, it's like, it's not good. And he did. Spoiler alert, he did. He slit the thing. And uh, it's, yeah, ouch, right? But you basically bleed out. However... Thanks to his checklist, they had a certain amount of blood um, stocked for, for transfusions. Uh, everyone's kind of running around doing things. They have the checklist to make sure they get the right people in the room. You've got Gawande literally with the guy's heart in his hand, pumping it, mm. while the checklists are still going on around him. And um, thanks to the checklist, another spoiler alert. Well, no, read it to figure out what happened. Uh, if the guy died, it wouldn't be a book. All right. Is that true? Why would he include it as the final story if the guy died? It did all these checklists and it couldn't even save the life. Because checklists don't always work. No, that's not the moral <laughs> of the story. 
Uh, Belky, I, I want to just bring it home with this one point. Checklists are simple. They're simple and they're <laughs> yeah, simple yeah, for a yeah. reason because they work. Do not sleep on them. Do not be one of those clowns that's like, we need to make life complicated. Break it down in a little checklist. You'll have every single like important action that you're taking will have like a little sub checklist. So we're not saying like for whatever the Smart Nonsense podcast, there's just one six to nine bullet checklist. No, we have it for like each individual item, like the start of the podcast, after the podcast, all of that, all the Uploading, editing. Like everything has a little sub checklist, but it, it's just nice. People like not having to think. And get it out of your head too. We, we, we talk like, for the love of God, write this stuff down. You can't keep a checklist in your head. You're, that's How many, we fucked up like three times. Erica keeps getting mad at us for not clapping. And now we clap. Right. And now it's easier so to see. So our mistakes stuff. then become other people's problems. Right. That's a big one too. Let's just keep this going forever. No, we're not going to. <laughs> Tomorrow. I think we said it before, but we're, we missed the podcast. We realized we missed it. Yeah. Yeah, this is a bonus episode. No. We decided this morning, you know what? Let's sit down and record a podcast. I had to hang up a call about uh, work and like my other podcast that actually makes money. Yeah. I hung up because I had to prepare for this. I talk about Parkinson's Law. I hadn't read this book this morning. You read a whole book. And I had a meeting. I I didn't start the book until like two hours ago. Three and a half speed. And I still come with some stats that may or may not be right. (laughs) Tomorrow, at least tomorrow, our time, I am talking with Jack and Joe, the finance bros that we mentioned before. Mm. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you then. If you got book recs, shoot them our way. <laughs> All right. See Later. ya.